Hi class, welcome to lesson 14. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to determine if an organic compound is saturated or unsaturated, differentiate between structural formulas of alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Remember that Y is an I just like Lytle and construct the structural formula of alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Make sure you're taking notes. Let's get started. Now, hydrocarbons are a special class of organic compounds that contain only carbon and hydrogen, as you can pretty much tell from their name. Now, the homologous series uh, are a group of hydrocarbons that have similar properties and similar structures. And we are going to use reference table Q to help us name uh, these various compounds. So here you can see on reference table Q, there are three different categories within the hydrocarbon series. Uh, we have alkanes, which have single bonds between the carbons. We have alkenes, which have at least one double bond between carbons. And we have alkynes, the Y is an I just like Lytle, um, where we have at least one triple bond between the carbons. Um, and we're given a sample structure and a sample name and a general formula uh, for each of these families in the homologous series. Now, reference table P will help us name structures in the homologous series because they give us the prefix that we're going to use to indicate the number of carbon atoms. So here you can see in all of these structures, um, in the first uh, compound, C2H6, two carbons means its prefix will be F. Or in the next structure, C3H6, its prefix will be prop. Four carbons is bute. Five carbons is pent. And now we're going to use the same prefixes we use in geometry. So six carbons is hex, seven hept, eight oct, and nine non. Now we can put reference table P and Q together to get a hydrocarbon name. So in this first example, you can see that I have one carbon. So the prefix is meth. And in the next example, I have two carbons. So the prefix is F. Now, when I look at reference table Q, I can find the suffix. So in the first structure, there is only a single bond um, with the carbon. And so that is going to be an alkane. So it will end in ane. So that is called methane. And in the next structure, we have a double bond between the carbons. So the double bonded structure and is an alkene. It ends in ene. So that is ethene. So let's see if we can put these two together. So in the first structure, there are two carbons. So the prefix is F. And in the second structure, there are four carbons. So the prefix should be bute. In the first structure, there's a triple bond. So we're going to look at reference table Q and we can see that triple bonds are alkynes. They end with the suffix Y and E. So this is called ethyne. And in the structure with four carbons, all of the carbons have single bonds. So the single bond suffix is ane. This is butane. So by now, you should be able to identify hydrocarbons based on their formula and name hydrocarbons using reference tables P and Q. One more detail that is given about hydrocarbons on reference table Q 
is the general formula. You can see that the general formula has this variable n, and we know that alkanes have um, 2n plus 2 hydrogens for every carbon. Alkenes simply have double the hydrogen, and alkynes have 2n minus 2 hydrogens. So as a general rule, if you have double the hydrogen, you're an alkene. If you have more than double, you're an alkane. And if you have less than double, you're an alkyne. So when we look at this general formula, we have C5, so that's pent. And then we have 12 is double plus 2. So this is in alkane, so this is called pentane. So here, let's do a couple examples together. So um, in the first example, we have two carbons, that's F. The second example would be pent. The third will be prope. And the fourth will be pute. Now, when we look at the first example and we apply the formula from reference table Q, six is more than double two, so that's an alkane, so that's ethane. When we look at um, the next example, 12 is more than double of five, so that is another alkane, so that's pentane. But six is exactly double three, so that's an alkene, so this is called propene. And six is less than double of four, so that's an alkyne, so this is called butyne. So by now, you should be able to name a hydrocarbon using reference table P and Q. Now, we've used the word saturated before when we were describing solutions on reference table J, and we can recall that saturated solutions were at equilibrium because they had the maximum amount of dissolved solute. That means that their rate of dissolving equaled the rate of recrystallization. In organic compounds, the word saturated still means maximum, but it's for a slightly different reason. So saturated bonds require single bonds between the carbons because when you have single bonds between the carbons, you have the maximum amount of hydrogen possible. So when we look at reference table Q and you examine the general formula, you can see that alkanes have the most hydrogens per carbon than any other hydrocarbon series. Now, unsaturated hydrocarbons will contain a double or triple bond between the carbons. Hydrogen can only make one bond, so hydrogen can never have a double or triple bond. But the double or triple bond between the carbons means that there is less than the maximum amount of hydrogens attached. So both alkenes and alkynes are considered unsaturated. There are three types of formulas that we are going to look at when describing organic compounds. The first formula is the molecular formula. For a hydrocarbon formula, we usually write the carbon and then the hydrogen, and it just shows the number of each element that is in the compound. So here in this formula, we have two carbons and six hydrogens. The structural formula is exactly as it sounds. It shows how all of the pieces are connected in the structure. In organic compounds, we always want to begin by bonding the carbons to each other, and then we'll fill in with the hydrogens. And the condensed formula shows what is attached to each carbon. Um, so in this case, each carbon has three hydrogens attached to it we have methane. The prefix meth 
tells us that we are going to have one carbon. Now, the suffix "-ain", tells us we are going to have an alkane. The general formula, according to reference table Q, for an alkane is C to the N, H to the 2N plus 2. So when we substitute here, if I only have one carbon, I'm going to need four hydrogens. We're going to always start by drawing the carbons. In this case, there's only one carbon. Carbon, in order to obtain a stable, low energy, noble gas, valence electron configuration, always makes four bonds. We'll attach a hydrogen at each bond. So the condensed formula for methane shows what's attached to our one carbon. So you can see that our condensed formula is simply going to be CH4. So let's work together and we'll look at a sample of ethane. Now let's look at ethane. The prefix eth tells us that there will be two carbons. The suffix ane tells us that we are going to have an alkane whose general formula, again, is this. So when we substitute here, I have two times two carbons, or I have six hydrogens. Now drawing the structural formula is a little more involved here. You always want to begin with the carbon and attach all your carbons together. So I'm going to start with one carbon and attach it to my second carbon. Now carbon always makes four bonds. So it is helpful to just look at one carbon at a time. This carbon has one bond. I'm going to add bonds as I add hydrogens. And then I'll repeat for the next carbon. To draw the structural formula, it can be helpful if you draw a line between each carbon-carbon bond like this. The condensed formula just shows which is attached to each carbon. So this carbon has three hydrogens attached to it, and this carbon also has three hydrogens attached to it. Now we're going to have my friend Miss Dodd show us more about alkanes and their structures. Our topic today is saturated hydrocarbons. So organic chemistry, just for those of you who don't know, it's become a big scary term, especially at the college level, but for us, here's what you need to know. We're gonna be studying carbon-containing compounds. There are millions of them. We're just gonna learn how to name some of the most basic, simple ones. So we're starting off with hydrocarbons. As you can probably guess from the name, these things contain hydrogen and they contain carbon. They can be very, very long chains. They can be much shorter. We're gonna spend some time talking about hydrocarbon chains that stretch from one carbon, perhaps all the way up to 10 carbons in a row. Okay, now the reason that there's so much diversity in carbon containing compounds is that the bonding of carbon is kind of unusual. It can form kind of a lot of different bonds. If you take a look at the Lewis structure that I have here, you can see it has four valence electrons. That means it has four valence electrons that could participate in a sharing or a covalent bond. And so this carbon structure right here could form up to four bonds in order to become more stable. Okay, so first things first, saturated hydrocarbons have single bonds only between their carbons. So you'll notice I highlighted the S there and the S there. S saturated means single bonds. These are otherwise known as alkanes, that's the name of their family. And we're gonna start by drawing some very simple ones right here. This first structure right here with one carbon in the center and then surrounded by four hydrogens that are involved in bonds with it. This is known right here as methane. Its chemical formula is CH4. And the reason it's called methane is because the prefix meth means one carbon. 
and you can find this in table P of your reference table, P for prefixes. So the meth means that there is one carbon. The ending A-N-E indicates that it's all single bonds. The next larger one in the alkane family would be two carbons joined together. You'll see a black bond here showing carbon to carbon bond. And then all of the rest of the bonding areas are filled with a hydrogen. The formula for this substance is C2H6. Using table P, P for prefixes, you'll see that the name for this should be F, meaning two carbons, and ane, meaning all single bonded. So ethane is what this structure is right here. The third one we're going to take a look at, the next larger one in the series, has three carbons all linked together with a single bond. The rest of the bonding opportunities all are with hydrogen. The formula for this is C3H8. And if you use table P, P for prefixes, you will see that the prefix we're going to use for three carbons is prop. And then the A-N-E ending tells us it's all single bonds. So this is propane. If you have a gas grill that might be run by propane, this is the molecule that's heating up your hamburger. Okay. So I have this big drawing up here, and I'll talk, call your attention to certain parts of it in just one moment, but here are the notes that I need you to have about the alkane family. Something that you should know, they're all going to end in A-N-E. These are straight chains of carbon, all single bonded together in a long straight chain. They contain only carbon and hydrogen. If it has something other than carbon and hydrogen, it is not a hydrocarbon. Okay. As I said, table P, P for prefixes, is going to help you with the naming. Now, I need to show you what the general formula is. So if you take a look up here at this big, long thing, you will see inside the dashed box that every carbon has a hydrogen above and a hydrogen below. Hydrogen above, hydrogen below. So there are two hydrogens for every carbon that's in here. The thing that's special about alkanes is there is also a hydrogen on each carbon that's on the end that's extra. So the way that we express that general formula, if you have n carbons, where n can be any whole number, the number of hydrogens that you will have is twice that number of carbons plus two more. So for example, if you have a general formula where you have seven carbons, 7 would be your n, so the number of hydrogens would be 2 times 7, which is 14, plus 2, so it would be C7H16. This concludes the end of lesson number 14. Make sure you've taken good notes. Upload a copy of your notes to Google Classroom and write down any questions you have and bring them to office hours. I can't wait to see you.